Welcome and good evening. I would like to extend a very warm welcome from all of us here at Rice Architecture to all of you who have joined us tonight, tonight for a lecture by Xu Tian Tian, uh, which is the final talk of our fall 2023 lecture series. As the founding principle of DNA design and architecture, Tian Tian's portfolio of projects embodies the values we hold dear here at our own school. Her practice uses rigorous research and close engagement with rural communities in southern China, for example, to revitalize local industries. So her work is an example of how research and engagement work hand in hand. Through, quote, architectural acupuncture, end quote, a term she coined to describe her design methodology, she embeds her practice in the regional cultural heritage and elevates often overlooked aspects of daily life in the Songyang region. Her first project in 2004 was a collaboration with artist Wang Xingwei to create pavilions for public restrooms. The slender pavilions have a minimal impact on their natural surroundings and their angled skylights allow users to have views of the environment all while maintaining their own privacy. This project is an example of Tian Tian's ability to elevate and shift our perspectives of the mundane. Working on a much larger scale, the brown sugar factory in Xing and the tofu factory in Kaiji are a balancing act between preserving traditional modes of production and new health and safety standards, all while creating spaces for public participation and observation. With carefully framed views, Tian Tian stages the manufacturing processes in the same way that we stage those in museums and art galleries as well. Therefore, her projects educate the public, unify communities, and energize shrinking industries. Tian Tian received her Bachelor of Architecture from Tsinghua University and a Master in Urban Design from the Harvard Graduate School of Design. She also participated in Ai Weiwei and Herzog Demeron's Ordos 100 project. She received numerous awards. I'm not going to list all of them here, but some of them include the 2008 Architectural League New York's Young Architects Award, the 2009 Design Vanguard Award by the Architecture Record, and the 14th International Prize for Sustainable Architecture Gold Medal. My colleague and Tian Tian's host today, Associate Professor Reto Geiser, will begin the Q&A section of the lecture after her presentation. For those of you who would like to stay registered and licensed, uh, the AIA continuing education credits will be available somewhere over there by the wine bar. So make sure to sign up and have your AIA credentials so you can get credit for that as well. This is a really great turnout tonight. It's great to see a full room, in particular as we get close to the end of semester and all the busy stuff that comes with it, including the final reviews. But as a final reminder, this is not the last event of the season. On Friday and Saturday, we will host the Garden Ecology Symposium organized by Assistant Professor Maggie Tseng. Friday's events will begin here in Farish Gallery at 1 p.m. and Saturday's events will take place at John Ferry Garden in Hampstead. Hampstead, Houston, not Hampstead. I guess England would be the other Hampstead. So uh, it'll be a nice way to go for a little field trip just north of town. Shuttle buses will be available from Rice Architecture to the venue at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. And one more thing. Please don't forget to join us on November 15, which is next Wednesday, at 6 p.m. at Basket Books in Old Montrose for the launch of Site 104, guest edited by Associate Professor Reto Geiser. Oops. In the meantime, again, thank you all for being here, and we are honored to have Tian Tian here at Rice Architecture, and please join me in welcoming her, her to the podium tonight. Thank you. Wow, um, thank you so much. I'm really honored to be here um, to have this opportunity to share our practice in China. Um, we just had a very lovely conversation with our young, amazing, young, talented students from Rice University School of Architecture, just in the campus. So I, um, I would like to, 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 to know what you think about the, you know, the, the, the architectural approach, but uh, um, what your concerns um, in general. So I'm really excited for the Q&A session afterward. Um, 
Let me start. And yes, this is our office. Basically, it's anonymous office. And we found that, um, well, in a lot of the um, and common understanding of China, it's still about metropolitan cities. And of course, that's related with the uh, decades of modernization, urbanization, mostly in the metropolitan area. But um, in China, we still have um, the agrarian um, history that, you know, um, still we have half population living in the countryside, in the rural region with the agricultural context. And um, our practice is, um, in the past 10 years, it's mostly um, related with the, um, and with the rural context in the villages in um, different regions of China. And we found that this is the process that um, we discovered actually, you know, architecture can really make a, a impact through um, minimal design intervention. But on the other hand, the culture, the heritage, the history, tradition can also bring a new inspiration to our modern architecture. So I'm going to start from the eight years of collaboration with uh, Songyang County, um, which is a um, very a typical agricultural county in, in, in China, in south of Shanghai. And this is the process. Um, we adapt this method, we call it architecture acupuncture. Um, so this is to look into the um, very unique cultural or um, legacy. We call it the legacy of the, each individual village. And so to take that as the starting point, introduce a public um, program to restore village identity, restore the, the sense of pride and honor, and to revive the um, embedded heritage or um, production, agricultural production as heritage. So at the moment, when, well, 10 years ago, when we first started visiting this area, um, there was this condition and the, um, the, we call it the hollow village condition, like any other rural region in a country, that young people moved away to cities for better life, better employment, and then most of the village community, village community um, were only left with a few, you know, dull population in, uh, with only elders and also didn't have the confidence or the belief in, in, its, um, in the future of its own village. And this is the area, like I said, um, it's a typical agricultural county. So most of the population, 190,000 population was in the, in the uh, rural uh, and 50,000 population uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a county urban center. So that actually, um, so the collaboration with the local um, administration and also local different village communities started to look into the county as the regional um, scale and try to build up a circulation um, to recreate or to revive this circulation between county urban center and rural villages. So this actually, that the eight years, through the eight years of collaboration, we have built up a, this um, uh, network, this mapping system um, in the county of Songyang, which um, each village with this acupunctural um, program and project to introduce a um, unique, uh, um, a specific um, public program, community program that is really tailored to the village and history and, and, and heritage. Um, Okay, so I'm going to start from the very first village project in Pintian. Um, by the time we visit Pintian was in 2014, and this is a village that was um, had only about 20 elder living in this village, and it's just ordinary mountain village. Um, so through the first visit, it was um, there was no specific um, program, but we were invited um, by the village community to take a look, and they were actually they were about to demolish the cluster of the buildings at the entrance of the village, um, because it was uh, abandoned and was in uh, um, um, critical conditions. So. Um, 
So the first village we propose to, to, the, to the village community, maybe we should um, preserve this cluster since that was really, these buildings were built around 200, over 200 years ago. That was really the first generation of the villager arrived here and built their um, houses, small houses, um, and then right next to, and then next to this building, that's the ancestor hall, um, which really um, as the, the, the original fabric of the village, historical um, fabric. So we consider this is the cluster that, you know, it has the value of the telling the history um, of this um, Pintian village. So uh, we actually propose a design to the local authority and propose it as a pro bono design to ask the, um, to convince the local uh, community to give it a try and local uh, authority can um, uh, um, fund for this cluster of building. Actually, it was through very um, traditional way of building. Um, this was the ram earth and timber uh, structure, tennis and, mo uh, tennis and um, um, mortis, um, mortis and tenon. Um, timber, assembly tin timber structure, which is a traditional way of building. Um, and it was done, the construction was done by the local villagers. And I have to say that as the first village project, we were very, very, um, um, what's this word? Disciplined in that way. And we took this as the opportunity of learning the traditional way of building in a mountain area with local resource, local building um, material. So it was definitely a, um, a process to, 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 to understand and to communicate also with the local um, builders, craftsmanship. And uh, the design actually was very, um, um, the overall design is to protect the, the original, to keep the original fabric. So the buildings are um, kept almost intact from the exteriors and the interior was reorganized. Um, so the space can, can be reused to accommodate different cultural or community functions. And the second floor, uh, for example, used to be the storage room, can be converted into a, um, home uh, a, a, a bedroom a, for the homestay business initiated by the young, young person in, in this village. Um, so that was really the beginning of the um, uh, rural uh, intervention, rural engagement 10 years ago. Really, there was a, the beginning of the entire social movement um, in, in China. And later on, after the completion of the project, this space um, um, attracted two young artists um, returning from the city of Hangzhou and set up their um, fabric dyeing uh, program workshop in this in this village center as an open artist studio, but also as an educational program for for visitors from local visitors coming from county urban center or other villages, and they also help to train the local um, villagers with um, uh, the the very um, local product on on uh, e-commerce platform. Um, so this becomes very popular um, destination in the region, especially, especially with this educational program. Um, and later on, after a few years, the population has grown from of this village um, has grown to about 160 people because a lot of the religious seeing the, the, the potential of making a better income um, back in their home village. So this is a, um, this Pintian village has become a very dynamic uh, village in the region. And then, um, so with this acupunctural um, pro program, actually that's how we um, proposed to the local authority after first year working in the region, and we were asked, invited by different villages as, as advisors, and which we ended up working with over a dozen pro bono projects. Um, so the next year we thought, Wow, the, well, that was a very good pro, um, pro, pro, process um, for us to, to, to understand rural context and um, because in, in, well, in China, many of the villages, the, the architecture is still about vernacular architecture, especially in this mountain area. So we proposed this uh, acupunctural um, 
uh, method to the local authority and to collaborate with the different uh, villages. For example, this is a um, Hakka village in the mountain area that has the probably the biggest, and yeah, it's, a, it's actually the biggest um, Hakka indenture collection in the entire country by an elementary school teacher in the village. So uh, this indenture, it's basically the uh, paper documents um, really um, um, indicated the, the history of Hakka um, family, Hakka uh, clan living in this village for the past over 200 years. So this um, indenture uh, collection or indenture heritage brings the, the pro a new program of Hanka um, Indenture Museum, which is a village museum. And also through this project, we wanted to, because the indenture, well, in, indenture is basically the, uh, the legal foundation of a Hakka society. So this brings also an opportunity to restore um, a lost building masonry building technique in the region. So we wanted to take this um, um, local uh, masonry technique, but in a way to it, to restore this heritage, but also to restore the, this um, um, indenture legacy, indenture heritage of um, Hakka family, Hakka, uh, Hakka society. And so the building is um, uh, is designed almost as a um, landscape um, uh, masonry wall connecting the village to the nature, to, to the other side of the village. And with this, the space is, um, we also keep the original um, creek on the side as the indication um, of the space sequence. And this masonry technique, um, which is so strong in a way, so when you play with the light and dark, it becomes the, the, the um, it, it, it becomes this, um, the main character in the in the space that um, to help us to to um, to compose a, uh, an atmosphere that is archaeological, um, or a space that belongs to the past, or or for for the visitors to contemplate the history. Um, and the water also um, with this place, you know, um, playing with the, the intensity of the darkness and the, the sound of the water also becomes a stronger feature in the space. And of course, when it's connecting to the village, uh, the space opens up as a um, plaza for the local um, uh, traditional performance. And we also look into a, um, a project in a flatland that is ne next to the county urban center. It was uh, zoned as industrial district in the 90s. And you could tell that, that this village, when it's surrounded by the um, factories um, since the 90s, eventually this, this, this village just uh, um, was totally embedded and also um, lost uh, the the, uh, the, um, the the confidence of the uh, of that that's continued from this um, glorious past, which was um, this was the maybe the most prosperous village um, in the region. Uh, started with a history of over 400 years. So on our first visit to this village. Uh, when we talked with the with the local villagers, with the community about the history of the this village, um, well, even though there was not there was no belief in in the in the um, in the village itself, but there was all um, we talked with everyone that, that they showed us this um, pride, the sense of a pride when they mentioned their ancestor Wang Jing, who was the a imperial scholar and one of the three most important historical figures in the entire county, and this is his home village. Um, so on, on the first day we visited this, um, this village, we all agreed that um, there, there would be um, the program, uh, a memorial hall dedicated to the ancestor um, in the center of the village facing the one family ancestors hall. So this will be the memorial hall to um, 
for, for the ancestor, but also to restore the pride and honor. And at the same time, the space uh, would also be a community space to accommodate different um, functions and activities social and cultural activities. So the design itself is just very simple way to, to uh, continue with the fabric of existing um, um, village. And so, and we also work with the um, ram earth, uh, which is just a very common building technique. And the, the structural system with the corner bearing walls, uh, concrete walls corner, um, is also to create a, um, well, this is a, um, a building technique also, you know, with the other cement buildings around in the village. But in a way, this uh, concrete uh, structural corners can be converted into memorial corners. So the, with this memorial hall, the exhibition is not happening at the center of the space, but rather at the corner to take the least occupied space, normally um, in the, with the corners. And so these uh, memorial hall are at the corners with the light coming from, from above. So in a way, this also frees up the space for uh, the central space for different cultural programs. But this also creates a uh, sequence of indicating the different moments of the ancestor's life. It becomes a timeline. So that the starting from the entrance, and you can walk around through the space. There's a special um, um, uh, sequence in, a spa in this memorial hall that can take you to different moments of the, um, the key moments of the ancestor's uh, life. And all these um, the exhibition, we were, we were really struggling with how to display with this exhibition. And then at the end, um, we, well, we, were, we passed by one of the factories around the village and, and found there's a um, masonry, there's a stone carving factory just right next to the village. Well, and then at the moment was it, then we all decided, well, this should be the, you know, the, the stones carving, the stone uh, sculpting technique should be used also in this building as the, for this, for this uh, memorial corners. So the, the space turned out to be, have this uh, um, uh, similar to, to the temples, you know, and when each village has a, has a temple or um, somehow was very, um, um, in in a way, it, it creates a sensation that um, for the for the villagers, and also for the for the visitors. So, and the space can also be um, with light, with play of light. You know, at the corners, in the center, can be used um, for um, other cultural programs and for for gathering um, events. Um, and um, in the in the countryside, of course, you would encounter many um, abandoned structure or infrastructure. So that's also um, a, a very important re resource to look at. Um, for example, this is Shimen Bridge, which is connecting to villages across the river and was abandoned since the night since the nineties after the adjacent um, we. Uh, bridge, new bridge for the, for the vehicles. Um, so eventually this becomes an unsafe uh, bridge and was about to be demolished. And then we proposed maybe this could be um, uh, renovated with a new addition of uh, timber uh, canopy um, to convert this into a pedestrian walkway, but also a common space shared by the two villages. Um, similar to the traditional lounge bridge, which is very common typology in the mountain region in this area, that the bridge is not only for um, transportation, but also not only for connecting, but really as a meeting point for the local um, communities. It's very, uh, it, you know, when you have a important meetings, so the, the bridge, the, the infrastructure is also a piece of architecture. And this is the idea that we wanted to introduce to, re to reuse this abandoned Shimon Bridge. And with the expanded bridge, at the, at the center of the bridge, with an expanded platform, um, and then the, the timber, the canopy just removed and to, to open up the, the space at the center. And with the trees, we wanted to um, 
to introduce a platform um, in this at the center of the the, the river that is, that is 270 meters wide. It almost feels like an island at the center of the of the water of the river, and the, the bridge can be um, multifunctional. It can be a uh, it, it, it has been used by the local um, villagers, you know, in its um, in many different ways. And at the same time, it also becomes the best uh, platform, viewing platform for this adjacent um, uh, ancient water conservancy facility, which, is all, which has a history of over a thousand years. And it, when you walk along the, the bridge, you can always hear the, the sound of the water. And this bridge also becomes a symbol of the two villages reunited since because they were used to be one village uh, and was divided, separated into two because of the flood. Um, and uh, working in a, in a countryside, in a rural region, we also look into the agricultural as, a produ as production, but also as heritage. So in this um, Hong Kong village with, with abandoned Camellia oil, workshop at the entrance of the village, we were able to um, renovate, reactivate this uh, ancient um, workshop, which was built over 100 years ago and was abandoned for decades. And then also with new additions to, to convert this production space into a cultural uh, window for visitors. Um, it becomes a cultural um, a meeting point for visitors at the entrance of the village. So um, in the center, this is the Ram Earth, original Ram Earth workshop, um, which is really fascinating with this uh, chameleon oil production uh, facilities, traditional facilities, tools. And then the design is wrapping up this um, historical um, ancient workshop with new layer of material with a, a stone on the on the surface, and the stone is actually collected from the river. Um, we cut it in half, and the stone wall is really, you know, um, this type of a stone wall is actually very common because we, we we found one um, on our way to the village. So we just decided to use this um, anyhow. It, it becomes very convenient material for us, um, and the construction was very. Uh, it, and the construction itself, like at any other projects, the construction become more uh, of a familiar process, technique, and uh, or craftsmanship belonging to to the place, to um, to the to its own site. Um, so the extension of the building uh, really bring the um, the a new surface, but also um, creating a a dialogue or a contrast with the original um, uh, workshop, which is made by Ram Earth. And in terms of the, um, the material, the color, uh, we wanted to create this contrast of, of uh, texture and of also of time. So again, this was also built by the, uh, the village, the, the, the um, uh, villagers as the um, skilled um, builders. And okay, so this is space um, with this essential um, workshop in the center. So the addition is, also, is almost like creating a maze to wrapping around and, and it takes you um, eventually go through the building and finally arrived at the center of this ancient workshop, which is um, the, the miling, it's, it, it's actually functioning as a common, a village common miling house um, with the water power and this oil extraction uh, machinery by local, by, by timber, by a traditional tool, um, really create a sensation when it's in use for extraction, extracting and miling. And this, this project is actually, you know, uh, the, the central workshop was really going through the very careful uh, preservation process to keep, to maintain the original uh, characteristics. But in a way, we also worked with the, um, our design intervention is rather with the um, 
roof that we replace a portion of the or original um, tiles into local glass tiles to bring in natural light system, uh, lighting um, and also to create this, to emphasize this um, phenomenon that within this um, ancient workshop. And we also look into, you know, each, basically each village has its, its own um, agricultural production that they are, that, that the community, uh, communities are proud of. So with this um, Saija village, it's a new tofu factory built at the entrance of the village following this topography, existing topography. And this was actually, you know, the, um, really through the discussion uh, with the local um, the, the villagers and they took us, they brought us to this um, location and decided together that this should be the, the location for the new um, tofu factory that would accommodate, to in integrate all the existing family um, uh, workshops into a new villager union to operate this factory as the shareholders. So they still have the ownership, the village collective still have the ownership um, with their production, with this uh, um, um, uh, new type of the rural um, industry, industry or business. And in a way, this is also to ensure the potential, the economic potential of the village uh, community or village, village house um, operators. And this, um, the, the, the procedure of um, producing tofu is actually with a sequence of uh, different compartments that is divided as into six compartments along its topography on existing terrains. Um, we actually um, took this as a, a opportunity to introduce the procedure of traditional way of making tofu as the different chapters of different episodes along this topo. And then there's also a parallel walkway for the visitors. Um, so the production factory also becomes a educational platform or a live museum to showcase the traditional way of uh, making tofu, which is the heritage, intangible heritage of this um, Saijai village community. And the space, um, the parallel walkway can also just be a, oh, it's always an open space, it's low maintenance space, uh, you don't need to, you don't need a check-in point. So it's always open, uh, welcoming visitors, but also can be used as a leisure uh, space for the local villagers. And the arrival point of the tasting hall at the end, at the top of the topo, uh, can be a multifunctional space that's um, um, always open to to um, to the nature. So with this. Um, tofu factory, we were able to work together with the, uh, um, the village community um, as, as the uh, opportunity to establish the villager union. So this is a very important um, part, part of our, our um, projects in the country, in the rural villages that um, it's not just the making of a building, you know, of a building as an object, but this is a social design process that we also engage with the, um, the, uh, the, the decision of the program and, and then, you know, to look for the buildable location um, site. And also to, um, most important is to, the, uh, is to establish this um, collective economic structure to ensure the, the economic potential, to protect the economic potential of the village community. In a way, the, the, um, the, the factory of production to upgrade the um, production uh, quality and price um, also becomes the, uh, how, do you, how do you say that? that um, it, it's a way to ensure to um, actually to re-engage all these individual family workshops um, that were left behind by the market economy and uh, to improve their performance in a, in a market economy um, as a
collective or co-op uh, structure similar to the co-op system. Um, and um, the other village, uh, Flatland Village, um, is known for the best uh, brown sugar production in this area. So this, this is a new factory uh, for brown sugar um, is built um, actually adjacent to the village, next to the village, with um, programs of production, but also with other villager, um, village, um, village community uh, cultural programs. And, and because of the because of the um, production, um, it's mostly happening in the winter season, um, starting now in the beginning of November and it finished by um, by the Chinese New Year. And it's considered as the religious celebration um, in the in the village. By this time, if you walk in the village, you can really smell the the sweetness of the sugar making in. In the air, and the traditional production is again with the family um, um, workshops in a in in a kitchen in a in a um, villagers' kitchen, and of course this uh, um, has a lot of uh, issues, critical issues like a fire and hygiene um, um, issues. Um, but the perform the the production itself is a very uh, striking performance. You can really feel the kind of uh, atmosphere of celebration. So in a way we take this um, production, the factory, as a, a um, central stage and the architecture is the background to accommodate all these um, production as performance um, uh, during the winter season. And we also consider the movement of these, uh, uh, their, uh, we, we call them the cookie masters, and the steam, the heat, the temperature, the motion of these cookie masters um, are the essential um, components of our, of our architecture. So, and it's also running for 24 hours during the, day, during the winter season, the production season. And so the lighting is also uh, designed as a stage uh, lighting. And then uh, this space is also um, to accommodate like a leisure space for the villi villagers and welcome visitors, invite visitors um, to, to observe this production as a celebration. And of, um, with the other, the building structure is required by the, um, by the production to be light steel structure, but we are also introducing local material like bamboo or uh, red brick in the other cultural program. And the space becomes a um, um, village um, cultural space for different activities um, during the non-production seasons. Um, with a tea workshop um, in this Tsimu mountain, we actually wanted to, but well, this is also a, a space to, um, a workshop to showcase the traditional tea making in this area. And we also wanted to take this as the, the, the architecture itself as a, um, a platform to reintroduce local um, culture and also the agricultural um, um, history and um, um, heritage. And this is the area with the, it's the, it's the only Shi minority um, county in the, in, in the country. So that's the, that's the tea workshop. Basically it's a very simple volume uh, sitting on this flat land, flat uh, uh, lot with uh, direction, um, it, it's orienting to south and north and south with three parallel spaces for production uh, on the east side and tea tasting on, uh, for, um, on, the, on, the, on the west, on the east side facing east. And the central uh, lounge is open to visitors for um, observation 
um, to take, again, this is the idea to take the, the production as a um, local heritage, a, a life museum for this um, production as a local heritage. So it's a simple um, uh, volume, um, rectangular volume, sitting on the side with eight light tunnels, um, bringing natural light to the central walkway. And with the workshop, and the, it's a traditional way of uh, making tea. And this is a workshop facing west. So you can tell from the, from the, um, the, the wall and the perforation, with the perforation wall um, by the west side is to provide sunshade, shading for the, for the production space. And this is a central um, uh, walkway open to, 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 to general public. Um, it's inviting visitors to walk into the space to, to, to observe the making of tea. Um, and with this local um, village community, th this is the Shur minority community and who has a written, who has a speaking language but doesn't have the um, written language, only with the pictograph. So we took this um, pictograph um, as the symbols for, um, for the perforation walls. And you can tell that in it, the wall really indicates the, the, um, the different activity, different elements um, on, the, on the different al altitude, on the different um, height of the elevation from, from soil on the ground to, to sun in the, in the sky. And this becomes an image of, of um, a cultural image of how Shur minority people are living in the mountain. Um, so with this, this space of tea, we wanted to explore further with the, um, the meaning or um, the culture or even the belief, it becomes a religion, the belief of, um, um, of the nature starting from agriculture. Basically, um, agriculture in a countryside, it's, the, um, it's really the, uh, the basic rhythm of how uh, people live on a specific uh, land um, in harmony with the nature. So in a traditional way, we have uh, 24 solar terms in a year instead of 12 months. And each term is really indicating a different um, uh, the pattern, the rhythm of agriculture. And during the day, we have, um, instead of 24 hours, we used to have 12 zodiac, zodiac hours uh, based on the different activity patterns of different species, different animals. So from the sun, sunrise to sunset, um, it goes from rabbit hour, dragon hour, snake hour, horse hour, goat hour, monkey hour, rooster hour. Um, and I also want to point out that the, uh, the summer solstice is really a big um, uh, day in the year. I think not only with the Chinese culture, but it's really a, a global, it's in the most celebrated day of the, the year by, by cult different cultures and different religions around the world. And this is a day that some, uh, we have the maximum uh, daytime and the sun reaches its maximum um, altitude. So that becomes the inspiration for our um, light tunnels injecting, uh, bringing natural light into the, into the central walkway. You can tell that each uh, light tunnel has a different angle. And these angles are really coordinated with the um, different zodiac hours um, from sunrise to sunset during the summer solstice day. So it's almost like uh, we, um, on the summer solstice day, we, we uh, freeze the sunlight according to different zodiac hours. So they create a different um, um, volumes as if the time, the, the sunlight or the time is frozen. And on the other hand, um, during the summer solstice time, like roughly around a month um, in the summer, on each zodiac hour, the direct sunlight could only enter the space 
um, through its coordinated um, tunnel, light tunnel. So there is the uh, time. Oops. How do I play this? Okay, let me try. Okay. So this is the time, how the time is going through the, uh, this um, central space uh, through the summer solstice time from sunrise to, uh, to sunset. So we wanted to take, uh, well, this, this actually becomes a sundial, this space of, for visitors and observing the tea production becomes a sundial. And we wanted also to take this as an exercise to um, capture the sunlight and the time uh, through architectural space. And um, these light tubes also becomes the sculpture um, extruding out of the, the building volume. So with the, with the very thin layer of water on top of the roof, uh, these tunnels and can become the sculpture, the, the monument of um, different, of the sunlight, um, frozen sunlight um, on the summer solstice day. And it becomes a um, monument looking a, um, dedicated to, to, the, to the sun, also to the rhythm, to the pattern of uh, our nature. Basically, our agriculture is really um, um, depending on the, the, ba the very um, uh, basic rhythm of our nature, uh, the cycle of our nature. And of course, um, in the, 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 the the ancient concept of living together with the different species. So this is a, the project we wanted to um, and to explore how architecture can um, can send cultural uh, message um, related with its agricultural uh, background. And we also look into uh, working in the, in the countryside. We also look into the connectivity with the urban and rural. So it's not just you know working in different villages, but there are also these um, spaces um, or the lands in between in the in the in the in the rural land um, in between urban and rural. So for these facilities, either for leisure or for infrastructure like the water facilities, um, becomes the opportunity to. Um, introduce a new layer, layer of a, a new platform of meeting point for um, visitors and also for urban, both urban and rural residents. So this is leisure, uh, leisure center um, by the foot of mountain, Dushan Mountain, which is iconic mountain in the region. It's, um, it becomes the first arrival point um, for visitors to enter the county of Songyang. And um, with this building, it's actually, um, I would say it's actually, it's not just the architecture, it's rather landscape and also with the infrastructure. If you look at the C shape on the right side, this is a water dam to separate the water uh, level, the, the height of the water surface. So it's actually create a harbor for future uh, water sports uh, facilities on the river. Um, and the architectural program is only to accommodate a visitor center and also a uh, gym for sports gym for um, young um, athletes in the region. But we started with the landscape approach to um, extend this walking loop, the circulation to create a walkway, um, almost like a plum promenade. Um, above the water. So this is really to uh, create more surface um, above the water to, 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 to be accessible, uh, to be open uh, uh, platform to walk. Um, uh, yes, this is an undulating surface that is um, bringing, you know, to, to create more layers for um, for activities, uh, for outdoor meeting space. And of course, um, you can also take the, 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 the straight um, uh, shortcut 
to access different layers of uh, um, indoor interior programs. And um, when you arrive at, this, at, the, at the center, um, the second floor of this spiral, this is um, the space with panoramic view open to the, to, the, to the landscape. And here we wanted to work, again work with the, to create a dialogue with the nature by cre opening a small um, uh, hole in the, um, actually a small, openings, um, a small opening on the roof. So this brings light into the space and we were able to work with the copper blades on the floor. So it indicates how the light, how the sun is passing through um, and through different months and different, different hours. Um, and the next chapter is the project we, we started to uh, since the beginning of uh, COVID. And this is a, uh, I wanted to introduce this Fujian Tulo as a typology in the uh, uh, Fujian province, which is my home province. And this is a very specific vernacular typology. Um, 46 Tulo buildings were listed by UNESCO as World Cultural Heritage in 2008, but there are still thousands of uh, Tulo buildings in the region. Uh, it's very common typology that was built for as a defense structure uh, with this very uh, specific and very delicate um, system. And, but it also, um, it's, it's, for, it's a structure for communal living, often for hundreds of people or hundreds of uh, families living within one Tulo building. Um, but still, still there are thousands of Tulo buildings um, in the region that is non-UNESCO non Tulo were left um, vacant and eventually abandoned because the local residents, local um, in, uh, original inhabitants started to build their own single family houses since the 80s, 90s. So this becomes a initiative that we propose to local city authority to look into um, this, this situation, which we thought was really an urgency, a critical issue, and through design, through architectural intervention, there's a potential to um, reintroduce or revive the Tulo, this abandoned Tulo, um, for a new program with adaptive reuse. So we were able to work with the uh, local authorities and to take seven Tulo buildings in the region in, in three different counties. Um, and uh, the idea, the overall idea is to take the ruin as a new typology. So we're not asking um, to rebuild everything into the original conditions, but rather the the, the ruin, the voids, becomes the opportunity for guard, new gardens, new um, courtyards, or lookout terrace. So the ruin becomes a new starting point. And this was the construction uh, process that is um, always working with the local um, vernacular building um, technique, the, the craftsmanship. But the void also create new um, uh, space for public, for community programs, and to revive this um, uh, abandoned structure for, as a new community center um, for, um, as the meet also a, 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 to restore the local um, identity and heritage. So I'm not going to talk about specifically about this project, and but if you are visiting um, Paris in the next month, we have the exhibition opening uh, La Cité de l'Architecte in Paris um, from next Friday. <laughs> um, and the last project I want to talk about is the Jingyun Quarry project that started the second year of the COVID. It was 2021. We, we received the invitation from the county um, and we started with this research and really to understand, also to, to discover that there's a 
quarry heritage in the region for over a thousand years. But since the millennia, many of the quarries were abandoned and closed down and left with these small caves that used to be operated by the um, uh, family workshops. So again, it becomes an in, in, uh, initiative to, uh, of course, to work together with the local um, villagers, local quarry, quarry workers, and local um, district authorities to look into a new planning of revive, reviving these uh, abandoned quarry spaces as um, existing space and existing um, to, to, to become, uh, to bring in new program for uh, the community, also for the um, uh, cultural and leisure facilities um, of this scenic district. And we started, of course, with the safety reinforcement um, done uh, by the geotechnical engineer and also with the minimal intervention approach. Um, only by the joints or the openings of the of, of the quarry, and um, the project was in the beginning. It seems to be very um, uh, complicated because it wasn't about you know an, an ordinary architectural scale or an ordinary uh, architectural. Uh, space, but it actually turned out, you know, after uh, and, and the collaboration, collaboration with the geotechnical engineer helped a lot to understand the quarry um, as a typology, and we were able to finish three quarries in a very short amount of time. Um, it was um, six months of construction in total, including the safety reinforcement and space reuse, adaptive reuse. And the first quarry was um, uh, just programmed as an open space arrival point and by the request of the local quarry workers as a, um, a live demonstration uh, space for them to to show off this, this technique as somehow the, um, also the local inten intangible heritage they're, that they're still proud of. And the second quarry becomes a um, performance space, a, a, a theater for, because of its acoustical quality. Um, and again, the design intervention is, uh, is um, minimal only to reintroduce the uh, the space with a central uh, stage or for the younger villagers or it could be a, a, a traditional theater for the traditional opera performance in the region. And the, the third quarry, um, which has uh, two caves, with the first is a rival entrance um, and the center after, after the first one, there's a, uh, the second is the second cave is uh, really a, a spectacular space with 36 meters um, in in its height. So this space um, we wanted to take this as a. Uh, first of all, we have to go through safety reinforcement, and if you look at the joint on the left side of the of the opening. Um, this is the concrete reinforcement, but really done in a pattern similar to the um, the, the texture of the manual quarrying uh, texture on the right side. And this space with its leftover um, uh, interior topography, it was um, the first impression was this is almost like in a landscape, a mountain in, inverted in, um, within this cave. And these were originally workstations or uh, walkways um, for quarrying um, done by the quarry workers. Um, that was um, by the time that the, the quarry was closed down. So we didn't uh, really, um, so in a way we wanted to take this cave as existing uh, architecture space. Um, it's not just topography for us. Um, so we are considering this as existing architecture and we wanted the engagement, the intervention is rather just to um, reintroduce a layer for activities for, for visitors, for community um, um, programs. And this 
this uh, quarry number eight is dedicated to the local cultural and calligraphy um, context and heritage. So we call this a book mountain um, with a layer of uh, timber. Uh, this is not timber, I'm sorry. This is a, a bamboo panels with the structure, with the steel structural framing as a membrane or a skin to wrap around all these uh, walkways and um, platforms, terraces. And this surface becomes, um, actually the surface brings a new uh, a scale of um, almost like a furniture, but indicating different activities of um, visitors, you know, people sitting down, standing up, looking around, taking reading books. So this is a scale that's um, um, broken down to the scale of furniture, but in that way we wanted to make a contrast with this spectacular scale of the quarry and also the prefabricated uh, system of this new membrane. It's also to, um, as a contrast to this um, organic texture of quarry that was um, um, produced manually by the local quarry workers. And in um, overall, this construction, not only the time, but also the budget, three of these spaces together are including the reinforcement and then space reuse are much less than making a new building. So this is actually, we, I mean, this, we worked um, with this project during the, during the pandemic. So we wanted to take this um, this project as a response to response to um, the the challenges, of course, and a discussion on um, open uh, on public program in open space, but also the discussion on reuse existing structure, existing resource um, instead of making new buildings, um, which actually could be also be economically more beneficial. Um, but what's most important is that we wanted to um, dedicate this um, quarry to the local, and that these quarries as monument to the local quarry workers, you know, to the local quarry heritage legacy that is built up by the quarry workers through generations. Um, and it's actually, it was through very harsh, um, intense labor work of these quarry workers, you know, by just working by hand. And um, it was very uh, emotional project um, because the, all the quarry workers, they, they were really engaged and they were volunteers on the construction site, they come every day to check out the construction pro progress. Um, at the end, um, when we met, when we met them again um, on the site, they were really um, um, emotional and proud. So thank you very much.